Joining me now is retired Admiral James Stavridis. He's a former uh, Supreme Allied Commander at NATO. He's also, of course, an NBC News uh, Chief International Analyst. Jim, I, I, I want to go back, though, to speaking of open lines of communication and transparency, I'd like to talk about the U.S. government, because it certainly seems to me that we never, the American public never would have known about this spy balloon had it not been visible to the naked eye in Montana. Is that fair? I think that is fair, and I think it's unfortunate. Um, perhaps one of the big takeaways here is going to be a little more transparency. You don't want the American public waking up on a Tuesday morning, looking up into the sky and discovering Chinese surveillance. So here we are tracking this balloon from takeoff, knowing full well what it did. Now, it, in hindsight now, Jim, this sort of explains why we didn't shoot it down right away. We had an idea of what it was, what it was likely doing. Then we thought it was probably a little bit veered off course, so we thought we'd keep track of it. But it sounds like we, we never, in, we knew exactly what it was and never intended to shoot it down until there was an uproar. That certainly is one way to interpret the events, and it's hard to dispute it. I think what we ought to do is kind of take a deep breath here and wait until the U.S. Navy recovers the remains of this uh, satellite structure that's parked underneath the balloon. Right. Um, we'll get that thing. We'll get the pieces and parts. We'll take a look at it. We'll reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. I think we'll have a better idea of motivation at that point. What's going on in low orbit? How, if, how much do we in our, I mean, you know, one thing I've learned about the Chinese is that when they are using a technology, it's likely they didn't invent it. It's likely they borrowed it or copied it. So I'm guessing, and we're not guessing, we kind of know this. What, what are we doing in low orbit and what are we doing with balloons? I think it's well known that the U.S. intelligence capability to collect signals intelligence, meaning cell phone conversations, for example, radar emissions, explosions, fires, electro-optic. We have superb coverage from high space and from, as you say, low Earth orbit satellites. And yeah, do we use balloons? We do. Uh, I'm going to, however, on this one, uh, in terms of Beijing accusing the U.S. of flying mm -hmm. balloons over China, I don't believe it for a minute. John Kirby, our yeah. rear admiral, uh, knocked it down hard. And it's, it's uh, unlikely to me in the extreme that we would violate sovereign airspace that way. Extremely provocative. Why, I, why do you say that? I mean, the, the Soviets and the United States, we, I mean, for a while we had an unspoken agreement to violate each other's sovereignty. And then we actually had a, an agreement yes. to do it at the Open Skies Agreement. So I, I don't mean to dispute your, 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 de, to your denial there, but why, sh, why should we just assume that? Um, we should because... We are cognizant of exactly what Lloyd Austin was just saying, mm -hmm. that these are potentially very provocative moments. Think of the shoot down uh, U-2, Gary Powers, Cold War. Sure. And, you know, by the way, um, the people who are flying around in the jets that are taking these shots and so forth, it's not Tony Blinken up there in a hornet with all that judgment and diplomacy and mm -hmm. years of experience. Um, the potential for something to go sideways and lead to a provocative moment is very high. That's why the U.S. doesn't do it, and that's why China should not do it. I guess where I'm struggling here with, with the, sort of the U.S. version of events is we talk about trying to communicate with the Chinese after we shot down the balloon. We're not getting any reports about any communications with the Chinese while we were tracking this balloon. Was that a mistake? I think it was. And um, from the moment it looked as though that balloon was drifting toward U.S. sovereign airspace, I would have thought our excellent ambassador in Beijing, Nick Burns, our Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, our Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, would have been calling all cars mm -hmm. in Beijing trying to uh, find out what's going on. Evidently, that did not happen. I think there'll be a lot of lessons learned, yeah. Chuck, not only in how to shoot down a balloon, but how to prevent the moment when you have to shoot it down. I'll close with this. One of my idols, World War II Admiral Ernest King, was asked once, what's the mark of a great ship handler?
And he said, never get in a situation that requires great ship handling. We missed, uh, we missed a few turns here. Yeah, I, and it, it leads me to this uncomfortable conclusion, which is we know tensions are pretty high with China. What does de-escalation look like? And, and is it just a timeout right now that we need? I think timeout is not a bad way to put it. Um, I've been saying the marker is Tony Blinken. Watch for how quickly we can reconstitute his trip. The negative marker would be if Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy yeah. chose this moment to announce a trip to Taipei. I hope he doesn't do that, and I hope Tony Blinken can get his yeah. trip back together. That would detention this relationship. Those are two great events to forecast toward <laughs> one way or the other, uh, Jim. Admiral yeah. Stabridis, always, always yeah. good to get your expertise. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.